webinar. Today, we will be discussing artificial intelligence and uh, as tools for research and writing. Um, today, uh, my name is Sarah Abrais. Today, my name is Sarah Abrais because a few uh, five minutes ago, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an inside joke for for those who were there uh, at the beginning. Uh, my name is Sarah Abraisi. I'm a teaching fellow here at CAFE. I'm also a DRPH student. Uh, I have a background in dentistry. Uh, I'm an assistant professor of prosthodontics. I taught in the dental school for five years, and I have around 16 peer-reviewed uh, papers. Uh, Prior to AI intelligence, <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I'm going to explore this new world with you. Today, um, my uh, amazing co-host is Eric uh, Tomas, uh, who is also a teaching fellow. Please, Eric, uh, introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Eric Thomas. I am a <laughs> master's student in cultural studies. Currently, I'm a TA for CAFE's 430 class, and um, I'm a teaching fellow, and we look forward to have a, having a conversation and learning a lot from you all. Welcome. So to start the conversation, I want to ask everyone here to please type in the chat uh, any tools that you know of that are specifically artificial intelligent tools for research. If you can chime in, I'll, I'll... Okay, Gemini, Google, Kineos, Illicit, the analytics model and ChatGBT, Otter, Rabbit, Claude, Transcripts, trans, Transcribit, bus, something, <laughs> uh, Claude, Julius, Illicit. Okay. So you have done your math. You have done a lot of math to surf this new wave of artificial intelligence um, for research purposes. In the chat, I want you to write how do you feel tap into your emotions as a researcher or as an academic or as a student toward artificial intelligent uh, uh, tools for research. Empowered, that's a nice word. Mixed feelings, ambivalent, uneasy, hesitant. These are all very valid emotions and as a researcher, as a fellow researcher like you, I feel all of them. So one day I surf the the those specific applications and I go like, wow, this is gonna make life so much easier for me. And then you go like, mm, what's my feeling towards manuscripts that are gonna come out in the future that are not done the traditional way? How do I feel about their credibility and reliability? Is it the same? Is my researcher a responsible researcher? And then like you have so many feelings and then it's it might be your new responsibility to let people know how to use them because it's the new it, it's the new wave. It's the new move. Um, I'm all for it. However, generative AI has flaws and can be misleading. That's correct. And then it's your responsibility as a researcher to, to make sure that whatever is being spat out from the application, from the, from the tool, is sound, right, aligns with your research. So you can have like, another form of credibility uh, check. Careful and need to be well-informed about broad consequences. That's that's correct. That's correct. It's a new fact. <laughs> yeah, a new FAD. 
So let's explore together a suit of uh, some, uh, many, uh, just some of the powerful AI-driven tools um, that can help you with your research, writing process, uh, from literature reviews to generative insights and evaluation resources. The reason that I have um, like mountain tops here that I believe that we're just at the tip of exploring a huge mountain or um, the tip of an iceberg. <laughs> We're going to find a big iceberg as we move forward um, with this uh, new technology. So why do we want AI-powered research tools for writing and research? Why do we want them AI-powered? So we are assuming that it might give us some sort of efficiency um, because some of them read very long paragraphs, read very long arguments, uh, complex arguments, multiple paper and give you like a summary. Uh, so it might be saving you some time and effort. Um, any of you that ever did um, systematic review or uh, a meta-analysis as well, understands the struggle to go through hundreds and hundreds of papers to make sure that they are within your Prisma checklist or not. Um, so with a show of, of hands, how many of you have delved into systemic reviews and meta-analyses? Let me see. We have one. Okay, so not many, but if, you, if you're if you familiar with it, you have um, uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria, and you have to actually go through your articles to make sure that they are within your inclusion or criteria. And then if they are, you have to go through them even further and to, to, to get out with, a, with an outcome. Um, and that can take so much time, so much effort. So we're hoping that with AI powered tools, we can run through that task faster. Also, it can give you deeper insights so they can uncover patterns, connections, and noble ideas. So uh, with a show of hands, how many of you um, dealt with qualitative analysis? Let's see, one, two. Three, so with qualitative analysis, just to give you um, uh, like a, an overview, you have to identify patterns to make codes and themes so you can have easier, um, so you can have a process of um, um, so you can have a process of uh, analysis. Also, it should provide improved credibility. AI can evaluate the reliability and relevance of your sources. So you can ask it how reliable the source is, how credible is this author in that field. And I mean, that saves you a lot of time because, um, well, you know that you cannot take any source. We've been taught that since the moment we got into grad school or like even school, Wikipedia is not a source, you know? And and a lot of uh, um, authors are not also a source and a lot of uh, uh, journals are not a source. So maybe that will save time you digging um, throughout that route. If I can ask participants to mute um, their um, microphones, that'd be really nice. Thank you. So let's talk about our first one that we want to delve in. It's called Research Rabbit. How many of you in the chat have came across Research Rabbit? A 
let's see, do you have shows of hands? One, two, three, four. That's really cool. Five, six. Okay, we have, we have, it's a very, it's a very, uh, um, it's a very uh, popular um, tool. So what does it do for those who have not? So it first helps you discover um, papers and studies and how they connect with one another. Um, and it can suggest more relevant papers to your topic. Uh, it will help you categorize and synthesize your sources. Uh, and it has an intuitive interface. So it knows kind of what are you looking for and it helps you going forward. And then it can help you generate detailed summaries and insights with their analysis uh, feature. How does that help? Well, it's doing the work kind of like the critical thinking for you. Um, I I I kind of like it because it helps. So I have like this paper that I really like. So you can connect it. You can connect uh, that to your Zotero, and then uh, it will help you find relevant. Um, it will help you relevant find relevant uh, papers. Um, therefore, if you're really desperate for more support for your claim or actually an opposing thing, uh, opposing point of view, you'll you'll find that in no time, which I think is um, it's a big save on time, especially if you're writing your discussion portion. And I remember that whenever I write a discussion portion, I'd like to, I like to be subjective. <laughs> I like to be objective and I try to find like the point, the both points and it helps me so much. I, I think I, I can see it helping me so much. So uh, in the future that will help me in that domain. So with the raise of hands, how many of you know perplexity? One, two, three. Four. Okay, that's nice. We have four people that know perplexity. Um, okay, we have more. Um, so what does perplexity do? It generates summaries, really long passages, highlighting the key points. Um, it, I think that perplexity is really, um, important for me as a student in the DRPH program. Um, it just goes through important things and makes them, I'm not gonna say simpler, but more digestible to me. And then I can use that to do new ideas and create solutions to research problems and I can dive more into the research topic because it will suggest to you how to move forward, which is something really nice because it's it's kind of like your personal tutor. All of them. I feel like AI tools are more of your like personal tutor um, or um, like a good friend that you can talk to that is a little bit wiser. <laughs> so yeah, I, I feel so. Does anyone want to chime in at any point? Do, do you want to talk about perplexity or talk about research rabbit before we move forward? I want to understand your point of view while um, from your stance or from your um, built up experiences that you carry with you. I'm curious how, uh... How much text does perplexity analyze? Because I know like ChatGPT, you know, has like a limit on how much text you can put in it. So you can push in the whole article. Or like the whole document, the whole book, if you want. <laughs> really? You can put a whole book in there? Yeah, a PDF. Yeah. <laughs> you can push it. You can push it a PDF. That's really 
that's really handy. I like that. I mean, yeah, as a student, can you imagine like having one of the <laughs> one of the readings to be like a whole book and you ask it to to summarize each chapter for you? <laughs> I think that's like a hack. That's like a basic hack. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I look forward one day to have pe having people um, upload my books in there and plagiarizing me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, uh, well, is it plagiarism? No, it's not. I was just <laughs> That's an argument for another day, no, I guess. I'm ha I'm I'm a big supporter of of using AI as a research assistant. I'm a big supporter of AI as all assistants. You need the extra hand. Imagine you're having an extra brain. That's really cool. So Anthony says Perplexity does give sources and can be tailored to focus on different sources for its answers. So Monique says to the plagiarism uh, comment, it's not if they cite the AI platform. <laughs> no, but Monique, he was saying that he's going to get plagiarized. They have to cite Jonathan <laughs> for his book. Imaginary book to yet to come. <laughs> Anyone else wants to chime in and make this presentation a little bit more friendly, please? I, I'll jump in, Sarah. Yes, thanks please. For, thanks for hosting this. And I, my main, it's a question and concern, and yes. we don't need to spend a lot of time on this, so maybe just a quick <laughs> couple minutes of an answer would be great. My, I've used Research Rabbit. I've never used Perplexity. But one of my concerns or things that's come up for me is just the accuracy of the information that gets put out back to you. So uh, there's been uh, times when I've tried tried like Claude AI and I've maybe uploaded something that I've written and asked it to summarize it. And it's done a pretty good job. But there's also been times when I've asked uh, Ch Chat GPT to compile a list of sources for me on a topic that I knew and I was familiar with, and it produced sources that don't exist, you know? Yeah. Um, the authors are real, but the the articles that it said that they wrote were not real. So I, I think that there's an um, incredible tool, but I it, it's, it's almost like I do find I have to double check um, some of the things that I, that I, that I get out because you have to do the due diligence. And so I, I don't know if you wanted to speak to that. Yes, I, I want to. We don't need a need a long answer, but just no, it's a it's, it a, it's a very interesting point of view because it's real. So but I'll I'll I will it's not a it's not it's not the Uno reverse card, but it's like another question to answer that. Um if you have a student worker trying to help you on a research, do you double check their work? Sure. Okay. But they did some of the work for you. Like they, they, they made, they made life a little bit easier, right? Absolutely. But they made, mis but they made mistakes. Right. So if we look at AI, the current AI, I'm talking about the current AI in 2024. I'm not talking about us moving forward and it becoming better and better and better. If we're working at that, it did it, did it help? Yes. Do I need to double check? Yes. Do you need to double check because it is unreliable or do you need to double check because it's your um, due diligence as the, the primary investigator or the research, uh, uh, main research uh, uh, author or the mentor to do so? Which comes first? Is it is it the chicken or the egg? So even if you're dealing with a colleague that is like a novice student in the field, you do that because you are very meticulous and it, it matches your pedagogy and your ethical values to produce ethical work. So I want to think of it as I know that you're paying like maybe $20 to get this prescri prescription to um, perplex it like to, to jet GBT and whatnot. But I think that's my answer for that. And it's the most responsible action to do, even if it's not inaccurate. So I remember when you said, I asked it to produce re references and it produced like bogus references. 
Uh, yes. And st student workers can do that. And, 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 and novice people can do that. And a mistake here and there can, can do that. Um, even with no use of any technology, you can uh, copy paste a wrong, uh, a wrong reference a couple of times in the in the in-text citation without knowing or by mistake or just being lazy. And then you're going to get caught uh, by the editors of the journal. So that's that. What do you think about that answer, uh, William? <laughs> that, that's that's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on it. I appreciate you taking some time to to uh, uh, consider it. Thank you so much for asking a very nice question. But it, it's I think it, it's it's our ethical duty to make these conversations happen because some people who um, who uh, will go delve into the AI research with no ethical boundaries might ask like whatever chat GPT or Claude to, to make the whole paper for them or something. So I noticed that perplexity can focus on published research for answers might be a start. Yeah, especially if you're not like going through um, um, all the papers that you need a topic published is 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 a great place to start. Um, if an RA invented the reference, I would fire them. That's why if you use ChatGPT to produce um, referencing list for something, uh, you might not want to use it again, and maybe try using Grabit uh, or Perplexity to to find references. Or uh, the, we're going to talk about other um, tools as well. So yeah, uh, I agree with Wesley. So basically, yeah, if 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 you decide that one tool doesn't do that particular job well, yeah, don't use it for that particular thing. Maybe ChatGPT bot can be used for something else, like maybe grammar check or changing the flow or something like that. Uh, I wonder if one could use the ChatGPT API to do the web scraping. Um, I I don't know actually if that's if it's gonna be accurate. I don't know. I, that's an answer that I still don't know. Um. So John says I'm all for it. However, gen yeah, yeah. We we yeah. That's that's correct. It it can be misleading. So Janice replied that it needs to be edited for sure. It can help to produce code to do it. Oh yeah, yeah. People who love code and know how to to do that, yeah, that's that's perfect. Uh, Emma says, I agree. Due diligence is essential in all AI driven applications and projects and any tools, to be honest, unless it's a calculator, because it it um it it proved to do better in math than me. <laughs> so going on. There's something called Semantic Scholar. So uh, with a raise of hands, because that's what we do in this webinar, who knows Semantic Scholar? None? Ooh, I provided new information to my very well-educated AI crowd. So, so it has a vast collection of articles um, and it can help you find like the most relevant research. Um, and it also can do like summary, citation, related work to stay up to date with the latest research trends. So it also connects you, it also connects you with like the, the latest papers on it, related papers, it does the summaries, uh, it helps you with the citations as well. So maybe Semantic Explorer can be better than ChatGPT uh, with finding references. S site, who knows S site? With the raise of hands, do we have knowers of S site? None. Wow, I am adding new information. Yay. So remember when we said credibility? Like, we really, it's not really reliable. So it analyzes citations to determine the reliability of the source. So 
talking about that, let me plant a seed. If you ask ChatGPT to, to find references for something, and then it gives you like, it spits out like a whole paragraph with insight references and whatnot, maybe you can run it by S side and see if those are right. And it can cut your time in, in I don't know, in half um, by it reviewing that for you. What do you think about that? Aha, uh -huh, Charmaine likes the idea. <laughs> That's nice. So I think what do you, what are your thoughts on those two? I'm going to put Eric on the spot. Can you turn off your volume? Yes. How may I be on the spot? <laughs> Well, because you're my handsome yes. co-host, yes, yes, I yes. need you. I need you to be my to the, <laughs> my assistant. Yeah. So uh, my my co-host, what do you think about S site and semantic scholars? So S site reminding you, like it just checks the credibility of your sources, and um, sorry. And Semantic Scholar um, has the same uh, platform as like probably Perplexity, which summarizes, connects, citation related work and whatnot. What do you think of that? And what do you think about the idea wow. that I just planted? I really like the conversation, <laughs> like everyone's shared around concerns and accuracy. And as someone who's used um, AI quite a bit, um, or let's say my qualification exam. Um, I love the idea of using sight because I also, like a lot of the guests, um, noticed there was, I was concerned with the accuracy and I was finding lots of mistakes. Um, I really like how you should always take caution, Sarah, like you say in the slide. And um, I'm very aware, like a lot of um, our colleagues, our guests have sh talked about, that there is a bias, that oftentimes um, you have to use a couple of these AI um, sites that you're informing of, Sarah, um, because unfortunately it doesn't have a lot of information quite yet. And um, it is also something that I'm still learning. And... Um, I'm really glad that I can f learn in a space like this because I haven't heard, I haven't used the other tool you mentioned um, that does the summarizing. Yeah, uh, the, the semantic scholar. Yeah, but I really like that idea. So for example, as an instructor, I'm really interested in, um, Sarah, and we've talked about this, how we could um, use these tools in like an assignment. Or how we could. Um, I love that. I love help, that. I yeah, love how that. we could yeah. use our help our students generate prompts. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in how this um, can be a tool of equity and discovery for our students. So um, I don't have all those answers, and unfortunately, I've not used all the tools. Um, but I like that we're learning that there's lots of lots of things that we know. And lots of things that we're we're not sure about, um, but I'm really excited by everything we're learning because this can help in our summer session to create a resource guide for our students. Um, and um, so, yeah, I look forward to continuing um, this conversation and keeping up with the chat. I'm really happy that there's a lot of action on the chat. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> uh, Thank of, you. Yeah. I think there's a, it's a really important thing, Sarah, like you said, to, to look at the caution um, as we're using a tool to help us do our research or writing or instruction. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm excited about the tool, but I also am reflecting on, on that tool. And um, I'm really glad that we're all doing that together. Thank you so much, Eric, for chiming in. And, and I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. I just uh, want this conversation to go much deeper than just me saying a bunch of information. Um, so 
The chat is really interesting. So uh, before you use an AI tool, you must check the database that the tool uses. That's that's really some tools do not offer this information. That's that's correct. And that's part, I mean, that's technical. And you would need to disclose that in your methods, in your method section uh, of any um, um, big paper. So Charmaine teaches media literacy and with the increasing capability of AI, the website design uh, and website, my students struggle to determine credibility. A site will be very useful. Um, Charmaine, can you please, if you don't mind, can you please talk a little bit about that from your point of view, if you don't mind? Okay. Um, well, in addition to being at CGU, I also teach high school students, mainly seniors. And I also teach at Pasadena City College. So, uh, and I, I teach English. So I'm especially dealing with um, working on idea generation and analysis and writing. And so when I teach research, it's very introductory baby step research, uh, the way the, the sophistication of what's available digitally is so, you know, it, it, it's yeah. so, um, <laughs> so, yeah, they're very talented at what they do. And so my students look at a site, look at an article, oh, you know, this is very, look at how professional this is and da, 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 da. And it takes a while these days to dig through to find out what is actually credible and what just looks good. I agree. Digitally. And especially since everybody has, you know, we all these qualifications that you can add that make it look like someone know, knows what they're doing, but they don't necessarily. So it, it, it definitely helps that there are sites out there like a site that can help evaluate credibility. Uh, there, there have been smaller things like, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Uh, they're, the high school tools are insufficient to match up with the sophistication now. I do agree with what you're saying, because I remember when I had my first baby research course, you had to like you were handed out, you know, that was prior to historic times when they handed you papers, printed out papers throughout the class. And you had to like dig through them and find like. Is this a credible source? So you have to look into like. Who are they? The title, grammar mistakes, so so many things uh, that like teachers try to teach us to find if this is like a credible source or not. Uh, and then like when you when you become like a, a not so novice in the field, you start picking up on like very respectable like journals, and you go like, yeah, well, I trust them. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, that someone is like an editor on there, but like, it's a skill to be taught. And still, when you delve into a new career, so I, I told you that I was, um, I told you all that I was a dental background. So I know like who and what and where to look and who are the credible sources and you learn them. But now as I'm in the public health, I, I don't know people. I don't know like the important journals. I don't know the important authors. And I think something like that can teach me and your students in high school and the students in college, like, what, why are they flagged? Why is it misleading? So it's also a teaching tool rather than just, well, eh, no, do not read that. That's misleading. Do you get me? I feel that it can also like teach the student, why is it flagged? So it, it flags potentially misleading or controversial sources. So then it makes it, you can make the decision. So basically you can like tell them, okay, it flagged it. Go dig and see why it's 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 flagged. Yeah, something like that. Thank you so much for chiming for 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 chiming in. And I appreciate that you put on your point of view with all this um teaching background that you have. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this one. It might be Sapien. It might be Sapien. It might be something. Um, it is a chatbot. So when you say chatbot, you are referring to something that is um, like chat GPT AI. 
um, it's a bot engineered to revolutionize, sorry, bilingual, <laughs> how academics and researchers and students interact with the vast universe of knowledge. It can do summaries. It can do connections. So all of them, so if, if, you have, if you find like there's a theme, there's a common theme between like all new AI, they try to cut your time down on like the summarization and they try to um, suggest new content for you and they try to make these connections for you. So what happens if we, you put in the information in all of them and you compare, you can put your paper. So <laughs> uh, if you have a paper that you have written, you put it everywhere and see which one is the accurate one. So this is a very nice study. We can do this. Who wants to be co-author? <laughs> we, can, we can do that. And then we can see how accurate each one of them. Maybe you can use one after the other to, to, to compile that summarization themes or like summarization stuff for you. Illicit. Illicit was one of the major things that you guys uh, mentioned before, like during the chat at the beginning of the uh, uh, webinar. Um, so again, let's 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 do it again. Who knows illicit? In the chat and not in the in the in the raise of hand. Okay, so one, two. Guys, you you were more. You were more. You're just not interested to <laughs> okay. Um yeah, thank you. So what is illicit? It you're kind of asking questions and getting AI generated answers, but how that how does this help you? So you can, yes, it's good for literature reviews. It's great for literature reviews because it will draw knowledge from everywhere to give you a well researched answer. Um, and then you can continue the the dialogue with Elicit. Like it's a smarter it's a smarter uh, tutor back and forth, back and forth, like a, a fact worksheet, like you're talking to them about the related topics and then you can clarify any certain uncertainty. So Elicit is a great start for a lot of questions that you have. If you have a research question, I just think that for my dissertation, the first thing I'll do is just when I have a question, like my my big question, I would just pop it in and see what's the common thing that appears. I hope it does not give me a subjective opinion of the matter, but it just makes you browse the internet with whatever information is available. Yeah. Do we have any questions at this point? Let us know. You can use the chat. Apparently not. Everyone is very well versed in the AI tools uh, domain. And uh... well, well, we, we do, do have, have one question. question. Yeah. Are there any AI tools to create code from variables? So the, the code from variables part, I have not um, stumbled upon that yet, but I believe that you will find something that will help do it. It's just everyone in their domain are trying to have this contribution. Are these, or are all these platforms free? Yes and no. So it's free uh, until you want a premium higher tier of things. So to the most of it. 
when does it become a point where we should be adding any disclaimers that AI tools were used in the process of research and others? I think that in the methodology section, I would, I mean, I would, I mean, the same way that you say that um, uh, articles were found uh, using so-and-so, I think in my opinion, it should be stated uh, in the methodology because that's a tool that you have used to either find papers or um, something like that. But, you know, we use Grammarly all the time to correct our like grammar and spelling and rewrite things for clarity. And I saw no one ever uh, disclaiming that they have used Grammarly on any paper. And I just... Yeah, we, and we don't, yeah, we don't cite that we use um, Microsoft Word or Zotero. But I mean, like, if you're finding papers through it, use it as a search engine. Sometimes in your methodology, you have to, you kind of like say that papers were found using this and this and that. So yeah, if you have found your papers your, through suggested uh, related articles from Perplexity, for example, yeah, or Rabbit. Papers were found using this and that. There are many tools we've seen. What would be the procedure for conducting research? Which tools should we use? What prompts should we ask? So there are many tools that you have seen right now. I think it's a... Uh, it's, uh, um, it is a user-friendly... Uh, kind of situation where you have to use them all and see which one you are more comfortable to use if it does the job in the same matter that you like. So um, for those who um, have Microsoft Word, they're not, they, they're maybe not comfortable to use Pages, right? The ones that is available on uh, Apple. So it's just, I think it's a, it's a, um, it's an interface that fits you your comfort um, prompts um, should we ask? So in regards of the prompts, usually these uh, tools, these most of the tools will have a, a user guide or have a, a YouTube tutorial somewhere that will help you do the start. And then that's like the beginning of the iceberg for you um, or the domino effect. You will find the ways and to, to say things in a way that serves you. But there are people that are dedicated to getting the prompts out there as part of their research activity, as part of their content creation. I think that at the moment, I might not have the exact uh, prompts to give you. But for example, the other day, Professor um, uh, Robert Kitgard just like gave us a word document of the prompts that he uses for something for educators and you'll find that extinguished distinguished um people will start piling up compiling prompts that they use for research and for education uh for in regards of the uh codes so it's Ju um julie So, uh, Jonathan, would you please kindly um, elaborate on the honor system? Oh, it was merely just my humble opinion on the matter. You know, as scholars, I just think, you know, I like the way Janice said it too. She's, they use the word responsible, right? So, yeah, it's just a matter of, of as scholars being on the honor system and and being responsible and ethical about making sure mm -hmm. our intellectual work is our work and that we're citing the work of other people. And, you know, I hope that this doesn't turn into something where we got to do this tedious. I use this and I use that because to me, AI is just a tool like Microsoft Word, like the Internet, like Zotero. And, you know, we made a big deal about those things when they came out back in the day. Too. <laughs> And now it would be silly for us to be like, I wrote this paper using Microsoft Word. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So I googled. I, I googled stuff. <laughs> we do a good job in higher education of of training scholars mm -hmm. to be responsible and ethical, mm -hmm. and I think that it's just a matter of we can trust each other to do that. And the consequences of not doing that is, you know, mm -hmm. it can affect your career. It can result in academic probation, and so there's already, you know, I think the risk is not worth doing something irresponsible or unethical to begin with. So like if I was teaching a class on it, I wouldn't put in my syllabus, oh, make sure you're citing this and that and blah, blah, blah. I would just say, have a line that says, you know, whenever using AI tools, just make sure that you're being responsible as a scholar and the same rules of plagiarism would apply. And that, that's I it, right? so. I don't want to, I don't want to like be loading everyone's work into Turnitin or AI checkers and be like, hmm, did you? Do but this? there's like, no, there's you know, no I mean? checker. I'm not a police there's no officer. AI. Right? Yeah, there's no AI I'm checker educated. that is hundred <laughs> percent. There's no AI checker that is a hundred percent, and you're just like being presumptuous that people are just uh, not being honest, and that's that's uh, that's yeah. icky. That's very icky. Um, I do agree with you on so many levels with the with the talk and i think it's your the same way that you don't hire someone to write your papers you you don't do that you you don't like go to i don't know like some sort of like handshake and go like um article writer needed <laughs> some so it's the same thing i guess so monique says we are in uncharted territories. So that's a uh, executive order on the safe, secure, trustworthy development and use of AI. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, everything comes with, with, I don't know what's the word. It comes with, with, with something that you have to make sure that you're fine. And, so uh, Janice says, one of my master's professor, a priest, is now interfacing with CA government, California and Sacramento, on the ethics of AI to make sure that it's legislated to prevent the unethical use as much as possible and create guidelines. I do believe so because we're like, you love your 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 you love your country and you love your state and you love that no harm can happen to it in regards of ethical and research and other domains. Um, the same way you'd not want any harm to come to your uh, future generations because of false information or bad research. So yeah, that's, that's speaking of the ethical considerations in, in research and writing. So it's important to know that there are implications of technologies and people talk about privacy, about bias, accountability. And I think that's part of your makeup as a, a your makeup as a, a researcher and as an academic. So we do no harm, do no harm. There's, that's the first thing that you should do is do no harm. Um, so let's uh, conclude with, it can help you, uh, AI tools can help you streamline your workflow. Uh, it can automate tedious tasks like summarization and finding related paper and uh, saving you some time and effort. Uh, it can give you deeper insights to uncover like patterns and connections and ideas. Uh, it can improve the credibility of the resources that you you pick. So maybe you are very picky with your resources. So there you have someone that does the work for you. And we want you to be having an empowered research uh, experience to enhance research and your writing processes. Maybe focus on the important value of your paper rather than like waste your time with the annoyance that need to be done in order to get your paper out. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so Janice says, uh, I think we're learning from the fallout from the free of all, let it all hang on out speech on social media. So thank you so much, Janice. Now I want us to have like the, the question, like a question and answer session, please. 
uh, feel free to, to ask us any information. Uh, also, um, Eric, if you can pull out the, the poll, if uh, you will find it um, in the more section. So yeah, please, who has any questions about it? Even if it was a, even if it was about ethical consideration, maybe it's your point of view. Maybe it's not a question at all. Yeah. Yeah, or any discussion. Sarah covered a lot of material and so did the chat. I have a, a two questions. Yeah, one yes, is a comment. One is a comment related to what we're just discussing now um, on ethical considerations. It seems like um, academia um, can emphasize different things at one time. At one time, uh, academics didn't have to emphasize documenting and all their citations of who said what. Uh, and now there's such an emphasis on it that if you neglect a citation, you can get in major trouble and disrepute. Um, at one time, people didn't feel the need to do that. So that's like a current ethical standard that fluctuates over time. And I think with AI and what is legitimate, um, it's going to be debated what is, you know, ethical or non-ethical and people all have different points of view. That was just a comment if that, and, and if people have reaction. My other I question, agree. my other question had to do with what's going on um, with the center. Um, we just had like three sessions of which I was part of the STEM session. And it's being depicted as a research project. Um, so I wondered if you could clarify a little more on that, Sarah, as far as what's going on with your department in the AI area. Is this a research project? I just took the survey that was sent out from Shelby, um, the other day, but, um, all these sessions, it seemed like it was more educative to me. So, uh, I, I, the first thing, the first, uh, to address the first part of the question, uh, the first question was, yeah, I think that we're in, um, in, uh, um, we are in a time at the time of our careers with research that people are very meticulous of what we put and what we do. And because of the many multiple tools that exist, people want to be, very picky about it and make life harder for everyone and that's my opinion uh that's not by any shape or form like a, a real factual thing but in my opinion yes i think people are being very difficult in comparison to classic readings that we are still using till the day from 19 i don't know what that have maybe zero revision <laughs> zero revision uh uh efforts into it so that that's my opinion yes with the with the with the major things that are there i think we are more uh told to or not to be citing and saying and disclaiming and, and to pr prove your credibility that yeah you know i did it without the use of any of these or yeah i did them with that but you know i'm credible i read it a thousand times it's just, yeah. In regards of the center and, and that, we had a, 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 pro, a, a research project uh, from a grant from the OCAC, and we had several sessions about AI. Uh, the um, And the, the Shelby's uh, um, survey is something uh, else. Uh, and this is definitely, it just happened to happen at the same time. Uh, but it's not part of that. Otherwise, I would have disclaimed it at the beginning, and it would have been uh, like consent. You, you would, I would have asked for you. Yeah. Well, I was part of that research project. I yes. was part of this STEM group, and I was wondering what the research questions were that that you were looking for answers because it was never specified 
to the participants. So uh, we the... were we were in we in the in the email and in the Qualtrics we were in in the beginning we were just trying to bridge the gap between academics and professionals and the students to see how um, professionals can use it and then how us as educators can improve our courses to serve the purpose other than us trying to just not use it to generate data. You know, as, as professors, we're only concerned about did the student learn it by himself? Did he write it by himself? Did they do it by themselves? Uh, other than that, we're just trying to give a point of view. Oh, professionals use it to provide that. Maybe we should teach them how to use that to for them to become the eligible entry level worker that the future needs. I hope that answered your your questions. And if you have any more questions about that, please feel free to email me, and I'll uh, send you the whole thing. Uh, um, thank you, Thanks, everyone. Sir.